The world is an increasingly dangerous place, and simply hoping bad things won't happen to your family or your church is not a plan. How can we best protect our churches and loved ones? Find out today on A View from the Wall. Join I Am A Watchman Ministries Managing Editor Joe Kerr with co-host Dylan Burroughs, bringing you a fascinating discussion regarding the importance of Bible prophecy and Christian living today as it relates to our responsibility as believers to be watchmen. This is A View From The Wall. Welcome to A View From The Wall. I'm Dylan Burroughs along with co-host Joseph Kerr, and we are continuing to face unprecedented times in our nation where safety is the number one issue. In addition to the coronavirus pandemic, our culture continues to face threats to churches, such as mass shootings, online predators, and much more. To meet these growing threats, we are joined today by Ryan Dobson. While many of you may be familiar with him as the son of Dr. James Dobson, Ryan serves as CEO of Rebel Parenting and is the host of Home Safe, a church-based training seminar empowering parents with the strategies and tools to protect their families at church, school, public places, and at home. Ryan, welcome to A View from the Wall. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, great. Let's dive right in today with you here, Ryan. Like others, your work has been helping address ways to handle the stay-at-home situations many are facing now. What are some of the areas you have shared to help as you've been talking with people lately? Um, You know, there's so much we can talk about. First and foremost, honestly, is grace. This is unprecedented. Nobody has dealt with something like this. Uh, It's brand new. There's so much turmoil, so much change. And we're not used to being around our spouses 24 hours a day. We're not used to being around our kids 24 hours a day. We're right. not used to working from home uh, with our spouse and our kids 24 hours a day. And we're all up in each other's hair. And I say, first and foremost, give each other as much grace as possible. That is a good way to put it. I heard your podcast, Ryan, on the 30th of March addressing that, and you had some great one-liners of people finding out what their work spouse is like now that they're (laughs) both at home. Hit a few of those one-liners. Those were fabulous. Oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't know I was married to the, let's table that and revisit this later. And then the 36 years we've been married, we've never tabled anything and revisited anything at a later time. Or... Uh, I found out that my wife's been using personnel management skills on me all the time after I heard her do it with her employees. Uh, I now know my husband has a work voice. Uh, my spouse makes small talk, just not with anybody we know, only with his coworkers. They're hilarious, and it's true. People don't know who their spouses are at work. Isn't that amazing that you can spend so much time with your spouse and yet they're a completely different person in their workplace? And now we're discovering more of that than ever before as we work at home, many in these quarantine situations. So it's fascinating and frustrating sometimes. And like you said, we need a lot of grace. But as in your work, you work with rebel parenting. Uh, Tell us a little bit about what that even is. Help people understand what your goal is with that and how that can help them today. Sure. Yeah. My wife and I found a rebel parenting just over three years ago. Uh, we do a podcast three times a week, um, all marriage, all parenting all the time. You know, I think each generation parents differently and they've got new challenges, new struggles, uh, new things to deal with. And we're trying to address those on a regular basis and just get, you know, that's totally unlike anything before. If you've got high school kids, uh, your kids are competing against parents that get professional writers writing their college essays. And how do you deal with that being a regular family? And should your child go to college or not? Is it still delivering on the promise that it once did of if you go to college, you'll definitely get a better job and you'll make more money and you'll be more satisfied. I mean, there's so many changes today. And I mean, in every aspect of life, in marriage and in parenting from early childhood into adulthood, there's so many changes that we try to address on a regular basis. Let's take that for a second because you talked briefly about all of the families being at home. And of course, part of that is school children being at home. Yeah, uh, My daughter is homeschooling her five kids at, in New York mm-hmm. and uh, other people are homeschooling kids that, well, they just never had that experience before we homeschooled yeah. our kids. But that was a long time ago. A lot of these folks who are dealing with that for the very first time because of the virus, they're suddenly homeschooling and they've don't really have a reference point for that. Any advice for them? 
Yes, definitely. And I'm going to give you a real controversial, unpopular opinion. And that is don't take it too seriously. We're going to go to back to school in the fall. And I just don't believe most people are going to work. I mean, you know, I got a kid in the seventh grade and I got a kid in the first grade. No one's going to ask what their grades were during the pandemic. We got about six weeks left. I say, do the best you can. Don't go overboard. We were given, in my estimation, I love our school. I love our teachers. I think they do a great job. I think they're trying to do too much online. And I've just told my kids, we're going to do the best we can and not worry about it when push comes to shove. You're going to be fine. You're going to get into your next grade. And I think in about six, eight months, no one's going to worry about this anymore. So do the best you can. But you also have to understand, neurologically, it's very difficult for a stressed out parent to teach a stressed out kid. You're not going to be able to do the job that you could do if everything actually was normal. It's not normal. We're not taking into account all kids at home, working parents at home. A lot of parents have lost jobs. I got laid off uh, from my primary job. um, And luckily I've got a home studio, so I picked up some extra work. Uh, But there's a lot of people that have been laid off. 6.6 million people applied for unemployment. All those factors are going into how can you possibly teach kids at home right now? And so I say, do the best you can. Don't sweat the small stuff. Well, those are such good words, and I think for many parents, uh, such as in our family situation, you have three kids at home, everyone's dealing with the impact of suddenly being separated mm-hmm. from their friends, you have people who are graduating high school or finishing middle school or even elementary yeah. school like my daughter, and she's thinking, I won't even get to see yeah. my friends again before elementary school is out. All of their plans yep. for field trips and end-of-the-year parties are all wiped out, and mm-hmm. yet here they are stuck in front of a screen saying, do your assignment for today. So one of the best things we can do is be there to courage to support and let them know that it's going to be better down the road. It's This is not going to be how it is for the rest of your life. So those are great words. You know, and that's so important. Oh. You brought up some really good, important things in there. Think about all the seniors that had prom and had graduation and all these things they're not going to get to experience. You have to take into account the emotional impact that has on kids. The fact that they can't play with their friends. We have 10 children in my cul-de-sac, 10 We live next door to lots and lots and lots of kids. They can't play with each other. They see each other, you know, over the fence. It's so crazy watching my eight-year-old talk to her best friend over the fence while jumping on trampolines. Goodness. You know, there is an emotional toll being taken on our kids, and you've got to bring that into account. My family is so sick of me telling them to be quiet while I do radio interviews and while I do recordings in my studio. And it's just this weird interim period where they're not gone and we're all on top of each other. And I still have to have a really quiet space in the house to do recordings. And so that emotional impact, that emotional toll, take that into account. You're going to get more attitude, more blowups, more tears, more frustration, all those things. And as a parent, just realize, man, their world has been turned upside down. And that's why I say don't sweat the small stuff. Just do the best you can. Just do the best you can and get through this. Well, these are some great words from Ryan Dobson. We'll be back right after this break with more on A View from the Wall. From I Am a Watchman Ministries, here's today's I Am a Watchman Minute. When Job was suffering, his wife told him to curse God, give up, and die. But he didn't. Instead, he said, Though he slay me, yet I shall praise him. Is that your conviction? Can you praise God even during the storms of life, even in the midst of suffering and plague and pandemic? Yet I shall praise him. It is praising God that cuts through the heavy chains that weigh us down and hold us back and make us weary. These are tough days. Watchmen have the opportunity and responsibility to lead in praising God and persevering and helping others overcome. Visit imawatchman.com for free resources that will inspire and equip you on your spiritual journey. Visit imawatchman.com to learn more. Be bold. Be faithful. Be a watchman. imawatchman.com
Welcome back to A View from the Wall. I'm Dylan Burrows along with Joseph Kern. We've been talking with Ryan Dobson. We want to talk in this segment about HomeSafe. HomeSafe is a church-based training seminar that empowers parents with the strategies and tools to protect their families at church, at school, in public places, and at home. For example, there have been more mass shootings, home break-ins, online predators, even natural disasters and more. So we want to talk today with Ryan about how his organization and how his work is doing something to help. So Ryan, get us started. Tell us a little bit about HomeSafe. Oh, Dylan, I appreciate it. Thanks, Joe, for having me on to talk about this stuff. We live in an unprecedented time. Uh, I'm a gun person. I've got a concealed carry permit. I've been hunting and shooting since I was really little. I mean, really, really little. My dad had me shooting a gun, understanding gun safety. And that last shooting in uh, White Settlement, Texas, really was the prime example on why we do home safe. And you can't blame the congregation of the church members. What you can do is point out what happened that went well and what happened that went poorly. What went well is they had a very amazingly trained church security force that took out a gunman in six seconds. Six seconds. The things that went poorly, three people died in the process. And at the end of six seconds, no one in the church bar security had moved. And it's because no one had been trained. We train people. What do you do if a shooting breaks out? What do you do? How do you gauge whether you're in a dangerous situation or not? There were interviews after that church shooting where people were like, we knew something was going to happen. We just could tell something was going to happen. And I'm like, if you could tell something was going to happen, why not move your family? Your children saw three people die in front of them and they didn't have to. You don't hear politicians, newscasters, or talk show hosts talk about what do you do in an active shooter situation. They don't want to talk about tightening or loosening gun control laws, but not telling families what to do. We tell children what to do. We've got active shooter uh, drills Uh, in schools and in major corporations, but we're not telling the family how to protect themselves from home invasions, from child predators, from online porn, from active shooters, you know, disasters like we're having right now in this pandemic. Who was prepared before this and who is now thinking, man, this happens again, I better be prepared. This home safe program, I really like the way that you've presented it. And there is so much in there, but just from somebody who's done active shooter trading before and been involved in some of these things myself, um, this is from what I've seen, this is far more than just the talks you have with your kids, just, you know, stay away from bad people. You offer some real life training and techniques that any family can apply. What are a few of those that people can begin applying right now and and create those safety habits? Oh, for sure. Listen, I know we're on home quarantine right now, but here's what we know. When they lift the quarantine, we are going to be out in mass. We're going to be out in public. We're going to be out at parks. We're going to be out at amusement parks, we're going to be at concerts, we're going to be all over. We're going to be so thrilled to be out of the house that we're going to be everywhere. Everyone carries a cell phone and you've got a camera on it. If you're going to go to a public place with your children, before you go in, take a full body picture of them. If they go missing, you can go, this is what my child looks like right now. This is what they're wearing today. Take particularly uh, close interest to your kid's shoes. Um, What we do know from all the studies is at times people that abduct children have different clothes for them to wear. Virtually never do they have new shoes for them to wear. So take a picture of your kid's shoes. It sounds silly until your kid goes missing and you're like, what were they wearing? This is exactly what my child looks like right now. Uh, And then here's the big one, Joe, Dylan, here's the big one. We try not to use the word child predator Because people assume they know what a child predator looks like, and you don't. I mean, it is nine times out of ten, the person that abuses your child is someone that you trust explicitly, that you would let in your home, that you would let them around your kids, that you'd have no idea, and you've got to take totally different precautions to protect your children from predators. Uh, We don't do sleepovers of any kind anywhere. I mean, I'll say we let them sleep at my parents' house. Uh, And some people are going to have to decide whether you let your kids sleep over your parents' house or not. We don't do cousins. We don't do friends. Until your kids are of an age where they could stop an attack, where they 
have a cell phone. They can call you. They know how to call you. They know the code words to use uh, when they call you. Um, Otherwise, we don't do any sleepovers of any kind. We tell dads, never, ever again do you drive a female babysitter home alone. Never again are you in a vehicle with a teenage girl by yourself. It just, it's, it can never happen again. We live in a very, very different time. Um, I'll give, I'm going to give you, I'll give your listeners a really easy one with codes. Uh, we use code words with kids to build your relationship and to keep them safe. And the first one is when your child wants to go someplace or they're being asked to go someplace that they don't want to go. So a lot of times kids are at school and someone says, come to my house and they might go, Ooh, I really don't think I should be going to your house, but I don't know how to tell you in public in front of a bunch of kids and you that I don't feel safe going to your house. Uh, Maybe their parents do drugs or they drink or they have angry parents or there's things going on, they shouldn't be there and they feel uncomfortable about that, but they don't feel comfortable saying that in a group and that's okay, but they can call you. We have a fully different codes of my kids now because I keep telling the people online what they are, but it used to be, can I go someplace means I don't want to go here, but there's someone standing next to me. Tell me I can't go. May I go someplace means yes, this is someplace you'd be okay with. I really do want to go here. May I go there? Uh, the second code is, I am someplace where I don't want to be anymore. They call you, and there's a phrase that you can use. Pick out whatever phrase you want. They can use the word pineapple in a sentence. And pineapple is your code word that says, hey, I've arrived at some place. I don't feel safe anymore. I want to go home. This is especially important for girls that babysit. And when the parents get home to drive them home, maybe the parents have had a couple of drinks, and the girls are like, nope, I don't feel safe anymore. Or the dad wants to drive them home by themselves. They're like, nope, we don't do that. And they, and they say, tell the people, hey, I always have to call my parents before we start driving home. And they use that code phrase. And you as a parent says, I'm on my way. And they go, oh, my dad's already on his way over here. Pick me up. You don't have to drive me. You know, or I've gotten to a party that I thought was going to be okay. And now the party's not okay. Please come get me. And that builds the relationship with your kids that says, hey, If you ever are uncomfortable or in a place you don't want to be, even if you don't know why, you just get that hinky feeling, call me, I'll be there for you. The last one is, I can't pick you up, but this person that says they're there to pick you up is safe because they know the family code. You know, you get some guy that drives up and goes, oh, hey, your mom's out looking for your dog because he ran away and she wants me to drive you home. And you go, okay, what's the family code? They don't know the code. You don't go with that person. Well, these are some great practical tips from Ryan Dobson with Home Safe. We'll talk more in just a moment on A View from the Wall. A View from the Wall comes from I Am a Watchman Ministries, established to help individuals know the love of Jesus, enter into a relationship with Jesus, live for Jesus, tell others about Jesus, and prepare for the imminent return of Jesus. We want to inspire the body to live a life of meaning and purpose. And at the coming judgment, hear the Lord say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. The wise will strive to live well so that they can finish well, The prudent will work to be aware of what God has done and what prophecy notes he will do in the days to come. In support of these goals, the I Am A Watchman ministry is happy to make available at no cost a wealth of discipleship, prophecy, and spiritual growth resources for those who desire to learn and those who are called to lead. Find out more by visiting our website, IamAWatchman.com. That's IamAWatchman.com. Welcome back to A View from the Wall. This is Dylan and Joe. We've been talking with Ryan Dobson with Home Safe and with Rebel Parenting. And in this last segment, we have some more things we want to make sure we address before we finish our time together today. And one area I know a lot of parents are interested in knowing more information about is how to best monitor your child. For example, uh, how do we monitor our kids online? Do we use some kind of GPS tracking when they're at a friend's house or on their phone? What are some of the things you've seen that have been most helpful in keeping track where your kids are without going overboard? Totally. Well, first and foremost, you know, so my son's 13 and he's had a cell phone now for like 
three months. So I'm having to put into practice all the things I've been saying in theory. And the first one we did was a cell phone contract. Right. It just says, hey, here's the expectations we have if you have a cell phone. You can just look one of those up online. We're going to come out with one at, at uh, Rebel Parenting. But you can just look up cell phone contract, and I mean, you're going to get a whole list of them on Google. Uh, but a cell phone contract says, this is what we're expecting of you. Um, and that's no hidden apps, no private apps, that we have access to everything and anything we want at any moment's notice. Um, and so, like, my son's got an Instagram account, but not a TikTok account. Uh, and the Instagram account is under our account, so I can look at it whenever I want. If anything shit, by the way, there's people that follow me, adults that follow me, that then started following LinkedIn, and we blocked all of them. I don't know you, man. You might be a totally harmless person, but you're like a 60, <laughs> a 55-year-old person following my 13-year-old. That's super weird. Exactly. Like, how would you feel if I was following your 13-year-old daughter? Like, you'd be like, what? What's up with that? Like, just so yes. weird. Like, I get it. They're fans. No big deal. But you shouldn't be following my 13-year-old. So creepy. So I just go ahead and block those people. And Lincoln's fine with it. Like, people follow him. And he's like, I don't know how to figure out how to block that person. And I'm like, oh, dad can fully do that for you. So the first and foremost, cell phone contract. Um, the one we use, the big one we use, the two main filtering devices we use, one is called Circle or Circle Home Plus. Um, and that has a million great features. And here's what I can tell you. I use it at home. It doesn't throttle your internet. Uh, if it did, I wouldn't use it. I just can't stand slow internet. It drives me crazy. We're a gamer family. If it's throttling or bottlenecking our internet, it won't be used in our home. So uh, Circle Home Plus is a good one. And it will tell you by device what apps people have been looking at and for how long. So if you've got a rule that they can be on Snapchat, you know, 20 minutes a day and you look at it and it's like, they've been on for an hour and a half. And you're like, Hey, how long have you been on Snapchat today? Like, Oh, like 20 minutes. Then it just gives you an honest right. conversation to have. You can set time limits on apps and the best one. And here's the truth. The only person that uses it is me. And it's setting bedtimes for the internet. I forget what time it is. Cause I've got a home studio mm -hmm. and a home office and I work all the time and it'll be like nine 30 and all of a sudden I can't send an email. And I'm like, why can't I send an email? And I look and it's like, Oh, it's too late for me to be on the internet. I should be in bed now. And so it shuts the internet off at a certain time. And for, and that one filters pornography too, does a pretty good job of that. The best pornography filtering software available is from covenant eyes, covenant eyes.com code word rebel, get you a free month. Uh, we used it before they sponsored the podcast but hands down, it's the best filtering software available. That is some great information, Ryan. Again, practical, practical things. We try to wrap every broadcast with a very practical message to the watchmen and women who listen to this program, folks who see and interpret daily events in light of Bible prophecy. Yeah. And we'd like you to give a word of encouragement and challenge to that group, those who watch, warn, witness, and seek to finish well in these last days. And in whether they're parents or not, Speak a word of encouragement into that group. Definitely. One, you're doing a great job. I mean, honestly, the people that are looking for signs and looking at the times and understanding what it means and doing their best to be prepared, awesome, awesome job. Don't get paranoid, but be prepared. Prepared is a great thing. When the H1N1 virus hit, I bought N95 masks. Guess what? Who's got N95 masks now? I do. They were gathering dust in my garage, but we need them now. And uh, we've been able to donate some and use some for our family. So those that are prepared, be prepared. I wouldn't make a billboard of it, but I would secretly be prepared for events, you know, gather a little extra and do so with a joyous heart so that when hard times come, you can help out those around you. Like we had an extra stock of toilet paper. So when there was a run on it, we could give it away to friends. It's the greatest time. I think we're going to look back at this time and go, who was there and who was helpful and who was making a money grab? You know, you've got the Kennedy Center. that got a $25 million grant in the stimulus package. And three days later, they fired all their employees. Or you've got Mark Cuban, 
of the Dallas Mavericks that's paying every single hourly employee, the concessions people, the cleaning people, the parking people, everyone as if business was usual out of his own pocket. We should remember that. And as watchmen and watch women, you can also be that positive force for good in times of turmoil and comforting those around you and telling them to look to the Lord and in donating and giving out the excess that you've created and collected over the years. That is such a good thought. That idea that how you act now is going to be remembered for years to come. How are people going to look Mm -hmm. at you if you're out there listening today and you're thinking, what am I doing to make the most of this opportunity? Not just a problem that exists, but this time that God has given us. Ryan has given us some great tips, some great suggestions. If you'd like to find out more about Ryan and his work, where can people go and find out some more information? Uh, rebelparenting.org and homesafeseminar.com Rebel Parenting Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, wherever podcasts are found three times a week. Great. Well, Ryan, we appreciate you being with us. And for those who are listening, we are going to put the information for the links he mentioned with Covenant Eyes. It'll be down where you uh, receive the podcast as well as Circle Home Plus. So make sure to check that out and, and pick that up if that applies to your family situation. We thank you for being with us here on A View from the Wall and look forward to being with you next time. A View from the Wall, in association with I Am a Watchman Ministries, exists to equip a worldwide audience with biblical truth, sharing it with others, and being prepared for Christ's imminent return. The team seeks to encourage, inspire, and equip watchmen for such a time as this. For information about the ministry and upcoming events, visit IamAWatchman.com. A View from the Wall is made possible by the team of dedicated pastors, editors, and the many contributors of I Am A Watchman Ministries. To support our efforts, give online at IamAWatchman.com and click on the Donate button. Thanks for listening, and join us again next time on A View from the Wall.